Hello, and welcome to Tuesdays with Thomas. I'm Thomas Douglas, the Artistic Director of the Bach Choir of Pittsburgh, and I'm so pleased to invite you to this episode today. That's a strange shirt you're wearing, some of you might be saying. But let me mention four names. Paul McCartney, George Harrison, John Lennon, and Ringo Starr. Yes, we know them as the Beatles. And the Beatles completely revolutionized American pop culture and the American music industry. So today we're going to listen to a couple of their songs as sung by the Bach Choir of Pittsburgh and talk about them a little bit more. In order to do that, though, let's go back to the 1940s. Yes, the 40s. In 1940, John Lennon was born, but so was Richard Starkey, who became Ringo Starr. George Harrison was born in 43, and then one year before was Paul McCartney in 1942. But it wasn't until the 1957 that the group really started to form. It began with John Lennon. He started a group called the Quarrymen, which was based on the Quarry Bank Grammar School where he attended. And it was in July of 1957 that, the, he, that that group played in Liverpool for the first time. And that's where he meets Paul McCartney. And they join up together and continue with the band. George Harrison meets the Quarrymen in 1958 and is invited to join. And then in 1959, the Quarrymen played the opening of the Casbah Club. And the lineup was Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, and their drummer at the time, Ken Brown. It was in 1960 that the Quarrymen changed their name to the Silver Beatles. And then Pete Best then joined as the drummer for the group. And later that year, they just dropped the silver and became the Beatles. Later that year, George Harrison was deported because he was under 18. And Paul McCartney was deported because of suspicion of arson, which left John Lennon to himself and he went to Hamburg. The next year in 1961, the Beatles returned to Liverpool. And in 1962, they auditioned for Decca Records. And they signed with their first manager, Brian Epstein. Now, Epstein hired Ringo Starr to play a live performance with them. And then later on that year in 62, he fired Pete Best, the original drummer, and Ringo Starr became the final member of the quartet that we know today as the Beatles. In 1963, the Beatles performed at a variety show called Sunday Night at the London Palladium, which launched the UK Beatlemania. And later that year, they released their first EP. In 1964, however, they released the EP in the United States, and they had their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. And the rest is history.
So that was And I Love Her. I'm sure you recognize the title and you recognize the tune. However, it was quite a different arrangement, a very mellow, very choral arrangement of the very popular Beatles song. And in this concert, that's what we endeavored to do, take the Beatles songs and sometimes present them as we heard them with the Beatles, but in other times present them in a slightly different fashion. As you will hear with the next song, Let It Be, kind of a pop gospel version. Hope you enjoy it. Standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be.
And so our only question today comes from George in Natrona Heights. He says, what's the difference between a director and a conductor? Well, George and everyone, the director is generally thought of as a theatrical leader. Um, when you have a performance on stage, the director is in charge of telling all the actors where to go, what to do, um, and also works with the lighting designers and the set designers and the costumers in making the decisions for the production. The conductor stands in front of the choir or the orchestra and conducts. So thank you everyone for being here with, with us today on Tuesdays with Thomas, and we'll look for you again next week.